Okay, this short video is designed to show you how you can create endless variations of a bass move by changing arms, travel, tempo, impact, and more. We will change a cross-country ski 25 times. If you do this with jacks, kicks, jogs, leg curls, and more, you'll have plenty of moves for your class routines. So we've got a ski going. You can see a regular ski going on here. Now our first change is with the arms. You press forward and back, alternating press forward and back. This gets more scapular retraction. So you could do double arms or an alternating row like this for more of that middle back chest. Our second change is with the arms again. We do one arm only. So you could ski with one arm only forces a little bit of alignment and then maybe you would just switch arms. So you have to use your core to align a little bit better with a unilateral ski. Now both arms, skiing with both arms, bilateral symmetrical, both arms moving at the same time, that's double the drag resistance. That's really one of the most powerful moves you can do because you have so many muscles working with that big ski. We change the arms again to a ski with a side arm raise. It's a different outcome. The muscles are different. Now you're recruiting the medial deltoids and the latissimus. These are jumping jack arms performed with a cross country ski. Now we change the arms again, only this time the arms are horizontal with chest flies. And maybe you change the hand positions. You could do full surface in, slice out for your chest. You could do full surface out, slice in for the back of your shoulders. You could do full surface in both ways. You could change the hands. And then we change it again with sweeping arms. You're doing a cross country ski, creating a lot of turbulence, challenging core stability as you sweep your arms horizontally with that ski. And then you can make an arm pattern with the ski. You can go up, you can go in, you can go out, you can go down with the arms up, in, out. So that's lots of the upper body, upper body muscle, major muscle groups working with that arm pattern. And then we can change the ski with travel. You can travel the ski forward. You could travel back. Really push forward into that. The outcome changes when you travel. It's harder due to the law of inertia. You could travel a ski laterally, sideways. The surface area is actually increased when you go sideways, and that makes it more difficult. So this is a ski traveling, using inertia, traveling sideways, more surface area. You could add turns, a little ski, quarter turn, ski, quarter turn, ski, quarter turn. This quarter turn just kind of gives you a different directional orientation. You get to move around, you get to see different sides of the pool. We change it again with a ski twist. You're rotating your torso as you're opening your hips. This is excellent for the hips. Those hips open wide, those arms push to the corners, rotating the torso. We've changed the outcome now. It's a ski twist. Changing again. Dropping the shoulders low to neutral position in the water, sometimes called level two position. Here there's no impact. Your shoulders are down. You're still doing a ski, but there's no gravity, so there's no impact. This is a ski level two. And then we can go to completely zero gravity by changing it again to a suspended ski or level three ski. This is challenging to keep your torso upright. You gotta do some sculling. So we've changed this. We've made it different. It's now suspended. Changing the impact again to a grounded ski. One leg kind of stomps forward and back with a grounded ski. There's no impact on this grounded ski because one leg stays grounded or anchored at all times. And now we change the impact to a power ski. Now we're adding impact. But you don't have to. If you brought your shoulders down to neutral or level two, you could still get aggressive with the legs and do this ski tuck, this power ski. Now we're doing the same power ski, but we're changing the outcome by holding the arms up neutral. You get more from the core with your arms held like this. A power ski with your arms up. Now we'll switch to tempo ski, double skis. We're changing the tempo, that's a double ski. We're slowing the ski up. Greater range of motion. You could elevate your knees between it. So we're doing a slow ski. 
Oh boy, and now we're doing a fast ski. We're doing a ski at land tempo. A ski shuffle. This is barely doable. It definitely shortens the range of motion, but it can be kind of fun. So this is a ski at land tempo, a ski shuffle. Now combining tempos, a ski in three is single, single, double, or water tempo, water tempo, half water tempo. Perfect. Now let's change tempos again. We got a ski syncopate. Ski, ski, out, in, out. Ski, ski, out, in, out. We'll call this a ski syncopate. Little combination of water tempo, land tempo. And now a ski jack. Ski, ski, out, and in. We're combining moves by doing a ski jack. Ski, ski, out, and in. Ski, ski, and now ski three and mogul right. And then ski three and mogul left. We're changing moves by combining moves again. Every time you change, it's a different outcome. It's a different ski. And now we're doing a half ski. Ski, together. Legs apart, legs together. Legs apart, legs together. We'll call this a half ski. This half ski allows you to do more combinations. Now half ski with a knee lift. Half ski and knee lift. Half ski and knee lift. Two more and then we're on our last one. If you can believe it, that was 24. We're moving into 25. Okay, number 25, half ski and jump forward. Half ski and jump forward. Again, half ski and jump forward. Half ski, jump forward. Ah, and that was 25 ways to change a cross-country ski.